Hi! In this episode of Toys Bag Zen, we're going to be looking at this snout spout. This is Masters of the Universe. This is the vintage figure. And I bought this at a toy show probably about a couple months ago. And the seller told me that uh, it didn't work and there were some issues with it. I... I think I paid too much for him. Once I got him home, I realized that he was a little bit more broken than I hoped he would be. But this gives me an opportunity to make a video about it. I can't imagine too many of these broken in this manner. So let's take a look at it and find out why I think it's worth putting some effort into it and seeing if we can do it. I don't think it's going to take that long. So when I got it home, obviously he doesn't have any accessories, and most of his accessory is his snout spout um, action feature. If you look in the back, you can take this out, fill that with water, and then here you're supposed to be able to press and get water coming out of his snout. His snout does have a hole at the bottom of it. His head does articulate. But unlike most Motu figures from this day, his head is actually a hard plastic, even though his ears are a little bit more rubbery, and you can't just pop it off. Also, he doesn't have the rubber bands in his legs, which I really like. And we don't have to worry about having loose bands in there and switching them out. I'm going to try to fix this guy, and we're going to see and investigate what's going on with him. So what you'll notice is somebody tried to fix him, I think, by pulling his head off like they would most Motu figures. They just, most of their heads just pop off. But this guy had a mechanism in there. And you can see here that the neck part of it is broken. Now, so for some reason, the pieces were still in the figure. So I managed to get those out by uh, doing a little bit of uh, upside down shaking but also there are some pieces in here so you have to be careful inside we have a ball bearing or just a metal ball and a spring so this mechanism inside works like a spring-loaded ball check valve I'll put a picture up here and it'll show you so what happens is when you press this button there is a valve that opens and pushes the water out, which pushes the bearing up. And then when the pressure decreases after the water comes out of the spout, then the ball bearing falls back down when the pressure is not greater behind it. And so the spring loads it back down. And what that does is that keeps the water from backflowing. So I've tried this a couple times. Nothing comes out of the spout. All the water, it just drains here and nothing happens so I think the the spring-loaded bearing does work but I think what's happening is this is being obstructed there must be dirt or something in the spout so I have to try to clean that out and so what I have here is I've got a couple different uh, pieces of wire these are guitar string wires this is a 12 gauge acoustic high E string. So I got some boiling water here and I'm going to try to get this spout out. I'm going to take these arms off because I do have to split this to try to get the head back in there once I repair it. So let's get just get this in the boiling water like this and uh, see if we can get this spout off. I'm wearing uh, rubber gloves too, latex gloves, just because I want, when this gets wet, it's going to be not only hot, but, well, the gloves aren't going to protect me from the heat, but it'll give me a little bit more um, grip to pull this out. That's hot. There we go. So that is what the spout looks like. It's a little neck joint in there. 
that makes sense. Okay, so here's our snout. We've got it out, and now hopefully I can push this all the way through and uh, dislodge whatever is obstructed in there. And there we go. You can hear it. I'll blow into the mic. You can hear the air going through that. So that seemed to have done the trick. Now I have to find out how to get this back in here. I've got a couple tools that we can use for this. I've got this here, which fits in there. And I've got this dental tool. So um, let's try this first and see if we can hook that hose and get it through. So I'm just going to grab my needle nose pliers here and uh, they're smooth on the tips so that it isn't, they're not serrated so it's not going to hurt the hose any. So that should just, there we go. And then we got to put that back in there. You've got this little piece here that fits into that slot. <laughs> All right, with a little bit of effort and work, that took a, it's hard on the hands putting this in because you have to hold it. And I kept finding that every time I heated it up and uh, put one side in, the other side <laughs> popped out. So it was, uh, and there's those little tabs that you have to get in on the top and on the bottom. And if you don't have that lined up right, then it won't sit in there right. But anyway, I fixed the obstruction. It's now working. And uh, now I have to try to get this back in here. Now, I could just put it in there, put the bits in there, put that in there. But I want to fix this, so this neck joint. And I got the pieces, so I don't really have to do a lot of work making new pieces. I just need to be able to split this apart. Now, I tried getting the arms off already, and they're actually inside the body. So I'm not really sure if this is going to come apart, but I'm going to see if I can at least get this piece open so that I can at least pry it open a little bit, so that I can at least get the head in there when it's repaired. So before I fix the head, I want to see if I can pull this apart. So I don't think it's necessary to take this off. It's a different arm construction than the, the ones that pop on and you've got a knob out. I think it actually is a rubber and it goes on the inside of the body. So we don't have to worry about taking that out. So that's good. So I just used this Plastruct Bondine and I just put that on there. I took my extra piece there. I do have another piece of plastic here. So I'm just, I put that Bondine in here and I bonded that together and plastic welded that together and we'll let that sit for a bit. Now I want to make sure that I can get this open so that I can get that head back into the neck. So I'm just going to try to open this up and you got to break that glue bond there. It actually seemed to have opened up pretty good. Let's make sure that the other side is opened up nice. 
That was pretty easy. Okay, that's nice. It is glued here on a peg in here. Now let's see if I can get that opened enough to wedge it open so that I can get that head in there. Yeah, and that looks like we can perhaps get that opened up wide enough that that head should pop right in there and then we can put a couple pieces of maybe a little bit of glue on the shoulder area and close that up. So that looks like it's going to work really well. So I've let this sit overnight. You don't need to let plastic weld sit overnight for it to cure, but I let this sit overnight because, well, when I'm filming, sometimes I have to do it over a few days in between work and stuff. So looking at this, it seems to be really, really strong. There's no movement. That plastic weld works really, really well. So I think that's going to hold. Now, I could get a piece of styrene and put that in there, but I don't think it's going to help the rigidity of this at all. I think it's just going to uh, be inside and you won't even be able to tell. So let's get this body pried open and we'll see if we can get this together. First, I have to put in the spring-loaded ball check valve. And from what I can tell how this works is you've got to get the ball bearing inside first. That goes right in there. You can see how it goes inside there. And uh, if you miss and don't get it in there, it's going to end up in the body. You can get it back out, but uh, I don't think you want to mess with that. And then you put the spring in on top of it. You can see that. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's the ball check valve and the spring. It's all inside. <clears throat> and then you just put the head inside, but we have to pry this body open first. So I use these to pry the body open, but they're not quite big enough for me to open it up to get the head in. So I use these clothespins as wedges, and I cut the tips off a little bit uh, deeper so that the we could get into the thicker part of the wedge. Not only is that going to keep the plastic from getting damaged in this process but it's going to allow me to open up the body a little bit more to get the head in because <clears throat> this is difficult because I have to open this up large enough to get this piece back in. So as I'm doing this I realize that I need to only use one wedge because the ears get in the way. So you put the hose into the body like this and I'm just using the one wedge which I've cut a little thinner so it doesn't get in the way of trying to get the head back in. And I'm just using that clothespin wedge that I've got just to spread it open wide enough to get that popped in and there we go looks pretty good the body goes back together and it still articulates and it seems pretty strong so this looks like it's going to be a great fix and it looks really good the next thing I'm going to do is like I said put some of that glue in the shoulders to hold the body together and then we can test it out with the water and see if it sprays out of his snout. All right, I put some water in him and uh, we're going to test him out before I glue his shoulders back together. We got some mosquito here. Let's see if we can hit him with some. Oh, and there we go. Not sure how good these worked from the beginning, but there you go. Gotcha, gotcha. So there you go, he's back working, his um, switch in the back works, and now his head is solid, and it does turn, and it doesn't come back out because it's been fixed. I have had some suggestions using epoxy. It probably works really well for repairing things, but I think it just makes a mess. But uh, I'm going to keep using plastic weld, and if there's 
any situation where it doesn't work, then I will try epoxy for sure. I have used epoxy uh, on other types of repairs on guitars and stuff like that, which isn't uh, <laughs> which isn't uh, recommended for using on guitars. But it is used as a last resort on fixing guitars, and you know what? It could be used as a last resort for the toys too. So thanks for watching this episode of Toys Bags and please like and subscribe to my channel if you like what you see here and hit the notification bell down below so that you can see new videos that come out in the future. I have lots of ideas and check out my back catalog. I think I've got over 160 videos now. I have a whole bunch of them just to the left of this video camera so I've got a bunch of repairs coming up. So uh, thanks for watching. If you haven't checked out my second channel called Retro Lab 82, check that out. I've opened up a toy store and I'm starting to do some videos over there too. Over there I'm just showing uh, in my new toy store I only mainly sell vintage toys and die cast and vinyl and stuff like that. So if you're in that kind of stuff, you can uh, check that channel out and I'm always showing new stuff coming into this store. If you're interested in seeing that channel and watching my store grow and hopefully meeting some characters from my area, I'd love to see you over there too. Thanks for hanging out. See you later. Mm -hmm.